Getting back to the figures now, here are the 2009 San Diego Comic-Con exclusives that I picked up that second year in San Diego. And we'll start down here at the bottom with these three. Here in the middle is an Egon Spengler figure from Ghostbusters, packaged up with Slimer. This is produced by Mattel and available at the Mattel booth. And this Egon Spengler figure would kick off a wave of Ghostbusters collector's edition figures that would eventually be available through the Maddie Collector website. But this first one was available only at the convention. And he's flanked by a couple of NECA figures or video game figures. Here is Isaac Clark from the video game Dead Space. It's the only Isaac Clark figure that NECA made there with the convention label. Pretty nice looking figure. And over here on the right is the Grenadier Lambent from Gears of War 2. He's one of the bad guys in the game. In the middle are some of the Mattel exclusives. Here is a Justice League Wonder Twins Xana and Jaina exclusive available in the Mattel booth once again. Although that's not where I scored this one. I actually missed it when I got up to the Mattel booth in 2009 when I was there. I missed this one. It was sold out. So I got it on the Maddie Collector website after the convention was over. But the convention exclusive one had the little blue monkey Gleek in the package. Whereas the post-convention one, the one that I scored, does not have Gleek. Here is an anti-monitor DC Universe convention exclusive figure from 2009. And there was a very rare 12-inch version of this. Only four or five produced by Mattel where he had it. there was a lottery system in order to get it. Up top here are the Hasbro exclusives. Here is an Origins of Destro 2-pack available at the convention at the Hasbro booth. And this is not the vintage Destro that we had seen previous, but the movie Destro. Because around 2009, that G.I. Joe Retaliation film was released. And so this one in the collectible box is the origin of James McCullen, a.k.a. Destro in the film. There's James McCullen the ninth from Old Scotland. Sorry for the glare. And over here is a more modern James McCullen the 24th, otherwise known as Destro. Played by, I believe, Julian McMahon in the film. And over here is a 12-inch Baroness figure in the trench coat with accessories, weapons. Kind of a cross between a vintage Baroness and the one from the comic book. The more modern, updated Baroness. Sharp-looking figure. Above her is a Mighty Mugs Commander Gree. Convention exclusive, though it doesn't have the sticker on there. Mighty Mugs were made by Hasbro. We had seen one previously, Iron Man. And they kind of laid the framework of the groundwork for the modern-day Funko Pop. Because they resemble a Funko Pop in many ways. And again, made by Hasbro back in the day before Funko started making the pops. And one more convention figure down here from McFarlane. This is a Spartan Griff Ball in the orange armor and with the Griff Ball there. And it was a shared convention exclusive, as it says there in the package, as well as available at Toys R Us. It was a shared exclusive. Moving down the same display as the convention figures sits this Marvel Legends Wolverine figure from the Icons wave of Marvel Legends in 12-inch scale. Early to mid-2000s when Toy Biz was releasing Marvel Legends figures. Pretty good detail for a 12-inch figure. And notice he's unmasked, and that's the reason I got him from my collection, because I missed the unmasked Wolverine Chase figure in Series 1. So when this figure came through the Icons wave, I got him. There's also a version that has him with his mask on. And it's a pretty good buy for 20 bucks back in the day. It even comes with a collectible book. I wish I had bought more of these Icons from my collection. Because Marvel uh, Toy Biz didn't make many of our, many icons figures, the 12 inch scale. They didn't make very many back in the day. Moving across left from the Wolverines figure, we see this display of six Master of the Universe Classics figures from Mattel. And these figures were offered through the Maddie Collector website, which I previously mentioned. We had seen these figures previously with Moss Man, Keldor, and, and, and Mantena. And here we're seeing Web Store and Scareglow offered through the Maddie Collector website. One character was offered every month for roughly $36. Shipping included. Down here is Hordak and Faker from the Maddie Collector website, made by Mattel. Down here is King Randor. And this hero figure was not available through the website, but this was a 2009 San Diego Comic Con exclusive figure available at the Mattel booth. At the top of the display, we see these two Boba Fett figures from Star Wars and the, and the Protecto clamshells. This one on the left here is from the Vintage Collection, this Boba Fett, and it's a chase figure. And what makes it a chase is the gold foil accent you see there on the package. And just to show you a little comparison here, here's a regular figure from the same wave. You see how the packaging does not have the gold foil, but just the basic on the cardboard there. That's the regular figure. And so this one is the chase figure in the foil. Same actual figure in the package, though. It's just the cardboard is the difference. And this one on the right is a mail-away figure offered by Hasbro. And it's a mail-away, uh, old-school style, where you had to clip the proofs of purchase with a shipping and handling check in, in there and mail it to Hasbro. And in return, they mail you 
this replica uh, vintage Boba Fett figure with a firing jetpack. And for those who remember back during the vintage days of Star Wars, there was an exclusive Boba Fett with firing jetpack. And this commemorative figure by Hasbro, this mail away exclusive, is supposed to uh, mimic or recreate that original Boba Fett from vintage days. I mentioned previously that I had more G.I. Joe 2 packs to show you, and someone's going to show you some right here. These are the Spy Troops G.I. Joe 2 packs from about 2003 or maybe 2004, which means they predated or preceded the Valor vs. Venom 2 packs that came out there afterwards. And these 2 packs don't necessarily resemble vintage figures, but instead resemble the G.I. Joe combo characters. And so we'll start with this one up top. It's the Neo Viper and Neo Viper Commander. Beachhead and a Cobra Sand Viper. Wide Scope and Cobra Bat. Here are the Ninjas, Kamakura, and Night Creeper in this two-pack. Down here is Duke and Pit Viper. And this last one down here is kind of buried and hard to see. It's Switch Gears and Cobra Commander in that last two-pack. A couple of more G.I. Joe Spy Troop two-packs on this side. Here is Dart and Dr. Mindbender. And the last one here is Kondo and Iron Grenadier. And this Cobra Twins Tomas and Zema 2-pack kicks off a string of 20th, 25th anniversary comic 2-packs that more closely resemble now the vintage figures, as you can see in there in the package. We had seen one of these 2-packs previously back there in the corner amongst the Marvel Legends stuff. It was Scrap Iron and Wild Bill that I showed you guys earlier. It's from that uh, wave and ilk of... G.I. Joe comic two packs. So now coming through retail later 2000s, 2006, 7, probably 8 and 9. So that's Tomas and Zaym out there. Here are the Dreadnoughts, Torch and Ripper. And here's a cool Firefly Storm Shadow comic two pack. And this one up here is Iron Grenader and Destro. Two different versions of Destro exist. You can see in the package there, he has the Blackhead, which is the rare version. The more common version of Destro is, has been featured with the Goldhead, as you can see there on the package. In my travels, uh, my retail travels back in the day, I only saw the Blackhead version a couple times. Uh, the one time is when I bought it, when I found it. And I think I saw the Blackhead version maybe one other time out there. But it was definitely tough to find the rare of the two. Peel back to the wall now, and we see here a dark side figure from DC Direct. And this dark side figure was from the Return of Supergirl animated show, and that's what it's supposed to resemble there, made by DC Direct. I just thought it was kind of a cool figure. I was a fan of dark side. I like the different versions of them, so I, I picked it up from my collection back in the day. Moving from the dark side along the wall clockwise takes us to this row of exclusive Star Wars figures. That I'll show you. And it also takes us to the 9 o'clock position on our fictional clock. Which means there's not that many more action figures to show you in the action figure portion of the collection until we have 12 o'clock. Which may come as good news for some of you viewers out there. Like for example my mother who's probably wondering right about now. So how much more crap do you have to show us until this video is finally going to end? Well good news mom. We're almost there at least to the action figure portion of the collection. But for the rest of my uh, vi viewers out there just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching my video so far. Whether it was from the beginning or any portion of it. Really means a lot to me. Please leave comments. I would love to hear the feedback you have about my video. And I absolutely plan on responding to any uh, comments or feedback that you leave. And thank you so much for watching my video as it really means a lot to me. Here along the wall are some more Star Wars figures. It's a heavy concentration of stormtroopers, clone troopers, pilots, and a little bit of some Darth Maul and Boba Fett. Starting left the display with Revenge of the Sith figures, which was the last Lucas-produced Star Wars film. There's a clone pilot in black outfit, Commander Bakara, the ATRT driver, there's Commander Bly, another version of Commander Gree, and down here is Cl Tactical Ops Trooper. Then move around to these two rows, it's Saga Collection Star Wars figures. Down here at the bottom is a holographic Darth Maul. Sharp figure there. And over here is a combat engineer clone trooper. 
Dutch Star Gunner and a Elite Core Clone Trooper. Sand Trooper on the left and Clone Trooper Sergeant on the right. Here's a Clone Trooper and Clone Trooper uh, Fifth Fleet Security. Different colors. Clone Commander Cody and the 442nd Clone Trooper in the Siege Battalion. Fire Speeder Pilot, the only one that Star Wars really ever made, which I think is just really cool. And here's a holographic Clone Commander Cody. Scorch, which was a highly softer figure back in the day. And another version here of Darth Maul. 501st Legion Trooper in the blue. There's another version of Boba Fett, kind of a classic looking one there. And up top's an AT, uh, Edit Driver, I should say. And this is a Chase version. It has the Galacta, Ultimate Galactic Hunt sticker. You can see it was dated 2006. And it's got the foil treatment on the Star Wars there, indicating Chase figure. All the basic versions had a Chase version that had the gold foil treatment, had the sticker, and also it has a gold base. I'm sorry, a silver base, I should say. A silver base rather than just a basic plastic base. Moving along the wall, top row are some Star Wars figures. These are from the 20th Anniversary Collection uh, from 2007. It's five figures up here. Four of them are Chase figures. And the Chase figures, again, are denoted with the gold coin, the sticker that says Ultimate Galactic Hunt 2007, and the gold foil treatment up top. And this one on the end here is the Galactic Marine. And again, he's the Chase version. Here's an Airborne Trooper, non-Chase version. He's just the regular with the silver coin. I didn't really care about finding Chase versions, to be quite honest. I just wanted the, the Airborne Trooper for my collection. It didn't really matter to me if it was a Chase version or not. Maybe I just got lucky, I think, back in the day and found the Galactic Marine and Chase version. But it didn't really matter Chase or not. I just wanted the figure in my collection. Here's a Ralph McQuarrie Concept Stormtrooper Chase version. And there you see in the Concept version, the Stormtrooper has a shield and a lightsaber. And here's a concept Boba Fett in the white prototype armor. Again, chased with a gold coin. We had seen this previously, the mail-away vintage version from Hasbro. And again, he's got the white armor on, so I had to add him for my collection. And on the end here is a Ralph McQuarrie concept Chewbacca figure. Again, chased version with the gold coin. And you see how the, the concept version of Chewbacca looks different than the, than the modern version that they arrived on. And over here is one more Star Wars figure. It's from the Saga Collection, and it's Darth Vader. And this is the Vader Chase version, again, with the, the gold-silver uh, uh, foil treatment up top, the silver base, and the sticker. And here we're going to see a display of 25th Anniversary G.I. Joe figures from Hasbro 2007. We had seen these previously, a whole display of them back in the in the little room in the corner. And so starting down here is Beachhead. Again, they resemble the vintage figures of the 80s. This was the 25th anniversary of versions that came out back in the later 2000s. There's Cobra Emperor, Cobra Infantry Trooper. Here's a Cobra Officer, Cobra Commander himself in the hood. Storm Shadow. And here are two versions of Snake Eyes up top. Here's a standard version of Snake Eyes where he comes with Timber, his dog, and White. And here is a rare, I guess you could say maybe Chase version or just a, a variation of, of Snake Eyes. Same figure of Snake Eyes, but here he has Timber in black. And Timber in black was very tough to find. A very a much harder to find version than the basic timber and white. Peeling off the wall one final time for action figures brings us a couple of figures in this display. First one here is a Rocky Balboa figure, the Rocky Four. I'm sorry, the Rocky Four version of uh, Rocky Balboa, where Ivan Drago administers a pretty good beating to Rocky, as you can see there in the package. Even though Rocky won that fight in Russia. And this was made by Jack Specific, same company that makes the wrestling figures back in the day. Best of Rocky Series 2. Jack's made a bunch of Rocky figures, again, back in the day, the early mid-2000s. 
Um, and not just Rocky Balboa himself, but different characters from the Rocky uh, from the Rocky films. All four of them, actually. Rockies 1, 2, 3, and 4. They made Ivan Drago, Paolo Creed, Lord Miller Drago. There was different versions of Rocky that were made. Again, this one's the one after the post-fight version of Rocky. There was a training version of Rocky where he was in the leather jacket when he was training in, in Russia for the fight and such. And it's even uh, got the little commemorative sticker there. November 2785 was the original release of Rocky IV. I picked this figure up from my collection. I found it at KB Toys, and it had a little markdown sticker, like sale price sticker. Yellow stickers to hang right there in the package, where it was marked like $6, because a lot of stuff at KB was marked down. And then you'd find it cheaper there than you would at Toys R Us, Target, and Walmart. And so I wanted to add just a Rocky Balboa figure to my collection. So I figured for 6 bucks it can't go wrong and add this one. Really wish I had bought more of them, actually. Because those figures from back in the day were, were really uh, collectible. And over here on this side of the display is a, another Batman figure from DC Direct. This is from Batman and Son. Uh, version of Batman. Just a very classic looking. One of my Suncoast video finds from back in the day. And I just like this version of Batman so I picked it up. I forgot to show you guys this Halo figure when I was in the side of the room. This is a Collector's Club exclusive Halo figure. And it's an EVA Spartan Soldier active camouflage version and it was available only through McFarland's Collector's Club Online. Moving back to the wall now and taking us to the 11 o'clock position on the clock are a couple more convention exclusive Star Wars figures. Here on the left is a holographic Princess Leia that was a 2005 Comic-Con exclusive figure as you can see there in the package. And over here, I just believe this is a Celebration exclusive figure of Emperor Palpatine. And I got to thank Kenny for both these figures because he scored them on the Toys R Us, uh, uh, HasbroToysShop.com where a small number of these figures were available on the Hasbro Toy Shop after the convention ended. And I remember Kenny had to just stay up till the wee hours to wait for it to go on sale. And then when as soon as they did, he ordered one, you know, one for me, one for him, and probably one for Jason as well. So thanks again, Kenny, for scoring me these exclusive figures to add to my collection. Ladies and gentlemen, that moves us to the 12 o'clock position on the basement action figure dial. Back here into the corner, this familiar corner, and the final display of action figures, which is mostly Star Wars figures and a few NECA. I just wanted to appear on camera and say thank you. Thank you to everybody out there who's been viewing my video, any or all part of it. It really means a lot to me, your time, your views. I really appreciate it. I hope it's been entertaining and informative. And this final display of action figures will wrap up the action figure portion of my collection, which will just leave me to show you the die cast that's down here in the basement, and that will conclude the collection video. But thank you so much for your time. It really means a lot to me. Please uh, uh, post comments. I will respond to your feedback and your comments. I absolutely intend on doing that. I also wanted to thank everybody over the years who helped contribute to my action figure collection. Uh, from my benefactors, Mo, Carm, uh, JB, Chad, as well as Kenny and Jason out there, and everybody else in between who helped contribute in one form or another to my action figure collection, just wanted to say thank you. Thank you very much for that. So we'll start at the bottom of the display down here with a couple of Star Wars battle packs, and these are clone battle packs. This one down here is called The Hunt for Grievous. It's five different clones in the battle pack there, and they're kind of like piled into a makeshift cardboard cutout clone transport vehicle. And it's got the sticker on there, although there were not chase versions of this. Hasbro didn't make chase versions of battle packs, only single card of figures. And the one above it's the clone attack on Coruscant. Once again, this is five clone troopers all assembled there in a little cardboard uh, cutout makeshift clone transport vehicle. And above those is a Evolution Clone Trooper Stormtrooper 3-pack. There you can see, before your very eyes, the Clone Trooper evolving into the Stormtrooper. The Clone Trooper, Clone Wars Part 2, to Part 3 there, the Fall of the Republic in the middle, and the, Re the Rebellion, uh, Part 4 on the end there. And moving to this side, here is an Unleashed Darth Vader Best Buy, as any competitive sticker exclusive, in this collectible tube, I guess you would say, plastic tube. And in uh, Star Wars Collecting Circles, this one is known as the Vader falling down the stairs. Because the way he's positioned and packaged are, it almost makes it look like he's falling down this set of stairs. But actually, it's just part of the diorama. 
But who says Star Wars collectors don't have a sense of humor, right? <laughs> And above that is a Clone Trooper commemorative three-pack. It's Walmart exclusive. They were released in waves of three. That's a third of three. And it's the commemorative DVD edition, although it says DVD not included. So you don't get the DVD with it, just the three-pack. And they made different types of clones in different colors, and they were exclusive to Walmart. Now for the final three Star Wars figures to show you. This is a Star Wars Celebration 3 Darth Vader exclusive. Now, what makes this figure unique, aside from the fact that it can only be obtained at Celebration, and for those who may be unfamiliar, Celebration is like the national convention for Star Wars collectors. As far as I know, Kenny and Jason attend every year. But what makes this figure unique is the fact that this Vader figure talks. And you see this gray button here. If you were to press the gray button, which you can't because the, the, the figure's in a protective clamp, you'll have to open it up. But if you were to press the button, the Vader figure would talk. And I'm not even sure if 15 years later the lithium battery inside still works. But nevertheless, at one time it did and, and did talk. And was only available at Celebration. Here's another exclusive Darth Vader figure. This is the 2005 Holiday Edition Vader. Where he's in red with red accents. And was available through the Hasbro Toy Shop online. And down here is a mail-away figure. And this is a mail-away exclusive Sergeant Brick. As you can see, their exclusive Sergeant Brick figure, where he's inside the package. And he comes with an exclusive card, as you can see there, as well as a battle mat, which is packaged inside. And it says it down here at the bottom, uh, Galactic Battle Mat included. And this was a Toys R Us exclusive mail-away figure. And now for the NECA figures. Here's a 12-inch Predator figure, made by McFarland Toys, early 2000s. And this version has them in half cloak mode. And it was ex available exclusively in Music Land. The standard version came through Mass Retail, Toys R Us, Spencer and such. But this half cloak version you're seeing there was available only at Music Land. And may have also been available at Suncoast Video. I don't remember specifically where I found it. But it was one of those two uh, specialty stores. And up top here are a couple of convention exclusive NECA figures from 2005-2006. Here's a Leon S. Kendi from Resident Evil. And again, it's a Comic-Con exclusive figure where he comes with accessories and exclusive outfit. Pretty sharp. And above him is a Bloody Marv from Sin City, the, the film Sin City. And yes, he's quite bloody, as you can see there. And he also comes with Kevin's severed head. Uh, yes, NECA did make Sin City figures from the film back about the mid-2000s. I didn't pick up any from my collection, but I did pick up this Comic-Con exclusive version of, Mar of Marv because it was just too sweet to pass up with all the blood there and really dug the character in the film as well. And that wraps up action figures. Thanks for watching, guys.